Well, welcome to the Red Men TV. It's Monday, it's daily news time once again, and you can see by the title of the video that I will be talking about Sadio Mane today, as well as Vida, uh, and a few other little stories as well. We've got Ben Woodburn, we've got Harry Wilson in the news. Um, so I'm going to get stuck into it. The Daily Express are reporting that Sadio Mane leaves the door open for Real Madrid move, and before we get into it, this is just looks like a non-starter to me. This just looks like absolute rubbish rumours again. And I've read it from a couple of different websites that Sadio Mane's talked about Real Madrid and all this, and is the move still back on and all that. It's just it's just them looking for something. It's them looking for clicks. And you know, I've actually looked out uh, at the very uh, the words that Sadio Mane uses in this interview, and it's in his own time of Bam in his hometown of Bambali, I think it is. And he was asked about Real Madrid, and these are his exact words. So, and I quote: "These are just rumours. I'm not aware of anything, and haven't been contacted. I remain a Liverpool player, and I will join my teammates in the United States for the pre-season tour. Real are a great team, but I'm focused on my team, Liverpool." And that's it. They're the quotes. They're the quotes that everybody is using. Yet yeah, you believe some of these video titles and article titles and stuff, and you're like, come on, these these are just you just rumor mongering here. This is crazy. I mean, you know, they always say there's no smoke without fire, but this to me seems like it's absolute horse manure. Um, ultimately, it boils down to he's literally said they're a great team. Of course, they are. Everybody would say they're a great team. They are. They're the European champions. But I am focused on my team, Liverpool. That's what you want a player to say. That's a player who's not saying, oh, I'll go to Real. That's, I am focused on my team, Liverpool. That's exactly what Sadio Mane said. They were his words. Why isn't the title of the article, Mane focuses on Liverpool? You know what I mean? It's, just, it's the same sentence. You've just used the part that's trying to get you more clicks. Um, and that's annoying, to be honest with you. It's really, really annoying. It's gone under my skin. But that's the world that we live in, unfortunately. Um, Embrace Saragul has written for Turkish-Football.com. Liverpool offer 15.9 million for World Cup star, but will have to increase to 30.9 for Lovren's teammate. Now we're obviously talking about I don't know how to say his first name, Domagoj Vida. Go on, Domagoj Vida. Um Listen, this has been rubbish straight away by Dave Maddock. Look at this further tweet. Liverpool have zero interest in Croatia centre half. Vida, despite widespread reports in Turkey claiming a bid has been lodged. Same applies to Villas Jack Grealish. The priority, and this is what I love, the priority in, in this window remains a versatile attacking midfielder. Yes, David, that's exactly what I want. Now, if you can put out a little article today, maybe, Dave Maddock, uh, maybe half ten, I'll be up, I'll be waiting for it, to tell us who those options are. That's what we want to talk about. We want to get back about, are we going back in for Fakir? I'm like you, I want to know, is this going to get put to bed this summer or not? Are we going to go in for a Pulisic? Oh, there's, there's rumours about Brands, Julian Brands. Are we in for him? Who are we in for? Because don't, don't keep teasing me and telling me we're in for an attacking midfield. I want to know who we're in for. I want to start looking at them. I want to know if I know them already. I want to know how good they are. I want to imagine them in this Liverpool side. It's great that the priority is an attacking midfielder, but I need more. We, Liverpool fans, together need more, David. Please put an article out today, please. Please, pretty, pretty, please. Um, so, yes, um, it's great. It's absolutely great that Liverpool are in for them, though. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, absolutely fantastic. Sorry, we're having some problems with the HDMI lead here. Uh, Harry Wilson has been offered a new Liverpool contract and is determined to impress Jürgen Klopp. Wilson will pen an extension to his Liverpool contract after making a flying start to pre-season. Obviously, he scored two goals in the 7-0 route of Chester at the weekend. We were there instead of watching the England game. Oops. Um, Harry Wilson's determined to force his way into Klopp's plans this pre-season. Uh, we've actually got a little bit of an interview uh, with him. Uh, it's up on the YouTube channel now, Tom. Yeah, go and check that out. Uh, he speaks really, really well, actually. And I didn't realise that he was a Liverpool fan growing up. And he's a guy who really wants to perform for Liverpool at the top level. And even if he were to be loaned out this season, I think he'll want to come back and he'll want to prove Jürgen Klopp wrong. And he'll want to get into that first team. And he'll want to get minutes on the pitch and score goals. Because I'm not saying his performance was outstanding at the weekend and we've spoken about this at length on the redmentv.com but he knows where the goal is and he knows how to finish it and if you're looking for a backup to Salah I know the levels and completely different 
but just having a guy who likes to stick the ball in the back of the net, pretty damn good. So I, I want to run the rule over him. Jürgen Klopp definitely wants to run the rule over him, and we've told Celtic in no certain terms that he's not going there because of the way that they've treated two low knees last season, one for Manchester City and one for Chelsea. So uh, good, 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 exciting times for Harry Wilson and Liverpool Football Club. Get on this one for a title exclusive Liverpool to fend off Barcelona interest to secure striker to a new contract. Did they see the picture, Tom? Did you get over there? Who do you think that is? Who do you think that is? Liverpool fend off Barcelona interest to secure striker to a new contract. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. No, it's not Roberto Firmino. No, it's not Dom Solanke. No, it's not even Danny Ings. No, it's not Daniel Sturridge. Barcelona aren't in for him. It is, in fact, dun dun dun, Taiwo Awoni. Sorry about the uh, pronunciation again. Sith, uh, Chelsea, Tottenham, and City all ready to take on the 20 year old. But um, he signed for us in 2015. He's not played a game for us because he has, can't get a work permit. So he'll, he'll be on loan again. But it looks like he signed a five year deal, which is great. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. If Barcelona won him with Liverpool, got him. I like that. I really like that. Uh, what else have we got? Would Ben could move to Sheffield United or Norwich on loan? That's an interesting one, isn't it? And again, this is something that, much like Harry Wilson, much like Shea Ojo this season, I think it's all about, if these lads are going out on loan, I think that's going to happen towards the end of the window, towards the end of the pre-season, because I think Jürgen Klopp does want to run the rule over these lads. He wants to see where they are. I mean, for me, what really, really... Um, surprised me at the weekend was how big Ben Woodburn's got like over the last year. I can see a load of names coming in now. Like quite a lot of people knew this one. I'm quite surprised at that. Um, but yeah, he's really sort of bulked up, and we saw him playing centre midfield as well. I think it's a big season for him. But if he goes out on loan, it's not a big deal. He's so young. I think he's only just 18 years old, isn't he? He's got a few years and a, a lot of development to do before he gets into this Liverpool first team. And I truly believe that he will one day be in this Liverpool first team. Will it be as a centre midfield? rather than an attacking player. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, so, have we got any uh, comments to get into, Tom? Yes. Um, Excellent, my friend. K YouTube says, Mane wouldn't be world-class at Madrid. Our system makes him world-class. Yeah, well, I, it's, a, it's one to debate that, I suppose, isn't it? I think he does suit our system very, very well. I think you can see that. I think he's improved year on year. Um, he's improved from when he was at Southampton. He improved from, at Southampton from when he was at Salzburg. And I think he's improved year on year at Liverpool as well. You just have to look at the goal and the assist return from last year to the previous year to, to understand that. Now, good players do bring their level up when they play with better quality players. And Sadio Mane has been able to do that. It wouldn't surprise me if he was to go to somebody like a Madrid or a Barcelona, he'd take his level up again. Um, but... You know what, ultimately I don't think he wants to. He's playing as one of uh, three attackers in this Liverpool side and maybe one of the best attacking front threes in world football and he's enjoying his football. Salah's enjoying his football. Firmino's enjoying his football. You don't break the band up, you know what I mean? And I think... I think he'd be great at any club because ultimately he's a world-class player and that's what world-class players do. But uh, you're entitled to your opinion and you never know, do we? will never know who's right on that one. Uh, Chris, for once, can you answer my questions? Says Copy 27 Yeah, sure. Ask me one. <laughs> um, I've got one here for Vida. Sivian LFC says Vida is 29. Same Simeon? Sivian. Okay. <laughs> Vida is 29, same as Lovren. It would only make sense to think long term and go for a partner for Van Dijk like Maguire, Koulibaly or De Ligt. Yeah, okay. Um, that does make sense. I mean, you know, 29 years old, but if Sivian... If we said to you, let's go for Toby Alderweireld, would you have a little look at him for two years? Because um, he's outstanding as well, isn't he? I, I don't think Liverpool are in for Vida. I think Dave Maddox made that one abundantly clear. Um, but I don't mind if Liverpool go for a 29-year-old as long as they're the right partner for the player. Because, yes, long term, I think you know I'd love to see Maguire at this football club. I'd love to see Koulibaly um, or the other guy that you mentioned there. But... It's about win now as well, isn't it? And that's something that sometimes that we can get caught up into this building for the future. But I, ultimately, I want Liverpool to win now. And if the best centre-back available 
this summer is Toby Alderweireld and he goes to Manchester United, that's what the rumours are, I'd be absolutely gutted if we weren't in the conversation for him. So, Or even like Diego Godan, I mean I know he's getting on a bit now but we saw what his performances have been like in the World Cup, we've seen what he can do at Atletico Madrid over the years and you know, I'd love to get somebody in who can just do a job now because I want Liverpool to win now, I want them to live, win in the future as well and it's a difficult sort of tightrope to balance that isn't it, you know it's difficult for Klopp because he does have to think about all those things. But for me personally, a 29-year-old like Toby Alderweireld would be absolutely brilliant. I probably wouldn't go for a 29-year-old like Vida because uh, I don't think he's quite at the level of an Alderweireld or something like that. But uh, I can see merits to both arguments, to be honest. 29-year-old, a young guy, as long as they're good and we get to win more games now, that's the important thing for me personally. Um, D-Dot says Harry Wilson should should Defo stay this season and come off the bench throughout? As long as he keeps performing. I think we've seen last season his, his uh, loan spell at Hall. He was absolutely brilliant, wasn't he? I think we've seen him in pre-seasons. We've seen him tear it up in the under-23s. And, you know, we've seen a lot of what he's good at um, at the weekend against Chester, and that's finishing the football. It's about, is he big enough? Is he strong enough? Is he tactically astute enough to play in this Liverpool side and we'll find that out through pre-season we'll, we won't know the answers Jürgen Klopp will know the answers um, but if Jürgen Klopp deems him not ready then he's not ready you know he gets to see him week in week out day in day out there's one person and one coaching staff that know Harry Wilson it is ours but they're going to have to take this pre-season to get used to him again and see how he's developed from last season obviously the back end of the season he wasn't there so they need to see what type of a player he is now and did he improve and they need to weigh up all of these options I personally would like to see him in and around the squad I think it does good for the academy it's, it shows the academy that there's a route through into the Premier League side as well which gives everybody a little bit of a lift much like uh, Rian Brewster or Woodburn getting into the sides and it's a tough one, isn't it? Because you've got Shea Ojo competing for that space, you've got Ryan Ken uh, competing for that space, and you've got Harry Wilson. I don't think we're going to have all three of them this season. I think it's probably one of three. And I think right now, Harry Wilson's looking like the best bet to get the nod on that one. So next question, please, Tom. Uh, Copy 27 has asked you a real question. Um, Chris, do you think the Shakiri deal is still on? Yeah, I do. Um, I think he's on holiday at the moment after the World Cup, isn't he? I think he's gone back to. Uh, I think he's gone back to Switzerland actually, um, and then and then I think that's on. I think it's a no-brainer for Liverpool, and I don't think they'll be rushing to get it done because if he's on holiday, he's on holiday. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the day before he's due back with Stoke, then something goes through there and he comes straight over to Liverpool or something. But I can't see him going back to Stoke. He's too good a player to be playing in the Championship. And I think we've got needs at those positions. I think we need two players, um, Shikiri plus one for those attacking uh, slots. So, yeah, personally, I think I think we will be in for him and I think we will ultimately get him. So there you go. Thanks for uh, thanks for asking the question as well. I'm glad that I finally answered one for you. LFC Spectre says hello, Chris Pajak, and then does this, and I will I will hello you back. Nice one, Chris. I don't think man is a Madrid signing. Oh, that one shot off. Sorry. Ah, what? I think it was something about Hazard. Apologies, it's gone. Um, Hazard definitely feels like a Madrid signing to me, and you know I know a lot of people. Um, I was speaking to Paul and he didn't really like Hazard's game against Belgium, but I thought he was at, uh, against it. Not Belgium. Oh, what's going on with this thing? It's doing my head in. I didn't really, uh, a lot of people didn't really rate Hazard's performance the other night. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. I thought he was outstanding first half man of the match. One of the reasons that Belgium go through, but he feels like a Madrid signing. And in a side that will go forward and play to his centre, I think he'll be absolutely fantastic and better than he's been in the Premier League as well. Uh, Chris, would you like someone like Amina at Liverpool? Yeah, I think we spoke about him last week. I mean, big, strong guy. I'd love to see someone like him at, uh, at Liverpool. Chris, do you think Shakira would make a good right centre mid? Does he have good centre pass and long shooting Aldi good patient skill what's Aldi good patient skill mean is that like the supermarket I've no idea I'll answer the first part of the question then I can understand um, I've never really considered it I, I don't know <laughs> to, to be honest with you I think he's coming as a bit of a backup um, that's about it is Sadio really leaving us his Hatem Mukatash I don't think so 
I think that's absolute rubbish. Go back to the start of the video and watch it. Chris, what does Sturridge have to do this pre-season to convince you he's up to scratch? Don't like he looked like a new player on Saturday, says Jimmy Bell. Um, mate, I'm all in on Daniel Sturridge again. He does this to me every pre-season. He puts the ball in the back of the net a couple of times and I'm like, he can do a job here. He can definitely do a job. And what you're going to remember is his body can't survive a full season of the Premier League but if we can get him to a place where he's just got to play 10 minutes and score a few goals every game I'd be happy with that because he's a model professional I really do like him um, I just don't think he'll be here I, but equally Besiktas is supposed to be in for him and they Liverpool won 15 million and Besiktas want to sp spend 9 million on him goodness me for 9 million quid you'd just keep him for a year wouldn't you it's not going to do anything for us. We've got all the Coutinho money in the bank. We're not spending anyway. You may as well keep the nine million quid and have a lad who's going to score more goals than Ings and Solanke combined again. Just my two pence worth anyway. Um, Jonathan Tarr, Chris Page, LFC Spectre. Uh, Jonathan Tarr is a good player. Like I know he had a bit of a downturn the year before last, and he was back up a little bit this year and stuff. But there you're talking about the raw, the raw attributes to be a great centre half for years to come. And again, I suppose that's balancing, isn't it? The um, the, the present and the future, uh, but Jonathan Tarr looks like a guy who's going to be one of those names on everybody's lips, if not this year, next year, he, he absolutely looks like he's going to be superb centre-half. Uh, so there you go, that's probably all we've got time for today. Uh, I'll be back in, let's say, let's go three o'clock with the starting 11 prediction for Tranmere. Um, yeah, we'll, do, we'll come back at three o'clock for the starting 11 prediction. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Red Men TV, and actually, if you're watching this after the fact rather than live, leave us some comments for the podcast tomorrow. Um, your questions, anything you want, be it football, be it anything else, just random questions, and me and Paul will rattle through them tomorrow on the podcast, which will be, of course, live on YouTube. Uh, sorry on YouTube and available um, on iTunes and all that. If you enjoy the podcast, let us know as well. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Ta-da.